Uh, today we have with us uh, Dr. Eric Westman here. Dr. Eric Westman, welcome to the Metabolic Health Conference. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's really a pleasure for us to have you here. For our audience, I'd like to give a, a quick and short background about who Dr. Eric Westman is. He doesn't really require any introduction, but uh, you know, Dr. Eric Westman graduated from Stanford University. He did his MD from the University of Wisconsin, Masters of Health Sciences from University of Kentucky and Duke University. He's an associate professor of medicine at Duke University. He's a board certified doctor in obesity and internal medicine. Dr. Westman founded the Duke Keto Medicine Clinic in 2006 after eight years of clinical research regarding low carbohydrate ketogenic diets. He is the director of the Duke Keto Medicine Clinic in Durham, North Carolina. Dr. Westman has published over 100 peer-reviewed scientific publications. He is also the founder of Adapter Life Academy, which offers various courses to understand uh, various aspects of low-carbohydrate diets and ketogenic diets, and it's many, many publication applications. He has also authored uh, multiple books, End Your Carb Confusion, The New Atkins, uh, keto clarity and cholesterol clarity to just name a few. Dr. Westman, uh, definitely I'm a huge fan as well, but <laughs> welcome and, you know, uh, just a brief introduction. And I'd like to dive, you know, let you know that I've segmented this conversation into the scientific aspect. Then let's, uh, we'll talk a little uh, tackling on the negatives or the myths around keto diets and uh, finally jump into the context of it for Asians and Indians uh, perspective. So sure. do tell us how you came across uh, low carb and keto and what really uh, convinced you. Sure. Well, we have to go back a few years to um, 1998. So 25 years ago, I'm working as a general doctor at the Veterans Affairs Hospital. So it, it's what my training is in internal medicine and the veterans affairs system is all over the country. It's uh, not insurance or private pay. It's actually part of the governmental um, governmental health system. So I'm treating people and I, I like an, I guess I was an unusual internist in that I was interested in prevention. And and so when I saw two people fixing themselves basically losing weight on their own. And, and I had tried to help people lose weight. I, you know, you have to lose weight, sir. You have to lose weight. And I send them to my, my staff dietitians. It never seemed to work. So when I saw two people closely in time losing over 50 pounds each, I was curious. And I asked, what did you do? And so can you imagine the doctor asking you, you know, what have you done? Well, it happens a lot now, uh, but it, back then, the, one of the gentlemen, remember, they were, they were veterans of the war. That's the Veterans Affairs Hospital. And uh, of, of being in, they were mostly Vietnam veterans that I was seeing in, more specifically. But one gentleman looked at me and he, he tried to shock me. He said, all I did is eat steak and eggs. And, and I, oh, my goodness. And you lost 50 pounds doing that? I don't believe you. you know, but then he introduced me to the, the Atkins diet, basically. And I went to the bookstore. I read about it. You could pick it up at the bookstore. And uh, he actually was a doctor working in New York City. But, but uh, you know, everyone around me, I started asking my other friends would say, well, you don't want to use that. Don't, don't even study it because your, the cholesterol will go up. And, and this is kind of like the first response you might have today, if this is your first impression of looking at this approach. So for me, 25 years ago, I thought when, when my patient came back again, he lost the, the weight and he kept it off. And I said, no, you shouldn't do this because your cholesterol will go up. He looked at me. He said, why don't you check it? And, and I thought, well, 
why not? It's a hospital where they'll do the blood and they'll draw it and they'll they'll check it. His cholesterol went down. And and so two in a row, the, the cholesterol levels went down in these people. Everyone else said the cholesterol would go up. So I'm thinking that there's a saying that, uh, you know, I smell a rat or, you know, if, if, if lightning strikes once, like it's a, a rare event, it just struck twice in the same spot. And, and this is not supposed to happen. So I was curious and I thought like most people well you would seek out information and you kind of uh, what i did is i reached out to dr atkins even i he had a clinic and, a, and an address i wrote him a letter and and asked him about you know your diet dr atkins and he, he calls me up on the phone and you know i i kind of had forgotten that i wrote the letter because i'm busy with other work and and you know, he kind of says well, what do you want and uh well i had several patients on your diet of course it wasn't his diet in the end of the day but you know we all blame people or for for the your diet and and they lost weight and he said well good that happens every day you know in my clinic and and I, so we went back and forth and i said well you need to do research where's the research there's no research in your book and he said well why would i want to do research i've been doing this 30 years i know what i'll find if i do research and i said well Dr. Atkins, no one believes you. There, there's this big disconnect. And everyone thinks you're doing something that is harming people. And I think that that got him. Uh, and he, he solved the issue himself by saying, come to my clinic in New York City. Now, so in the U.S., that's a two-hour flight by plane. Everyone wants, my staff wanted to go to New York City to have fun for the evening. So I, it wasn't hard to convince them to go. I, we, I was researching something totally different. And so I spent a day in their clinic and I saw the charts of people coming in and the, the cholesterol numbers getting better and the weight coming down. And, and at the lunch hour, I said, you need, to, you need to study this. I'll do it for you. Here's a here's a proposal. And, and so they funded us to go back to Duke and Durham, uh, uh, it's a totally separate place, separate ent entity under a university setting to do the first study. And, you know, so it was published in 2002. The 50 people on the Atkins diet or low carb diet, we didn't call it Atkins in there, although we cited him as funding the study which caused some raucous in the review process because the rev reviewers said, we're not used to seeing studies funded by doctors. You know, but when I asked Dr. Atkins, he said, nobody else ever asked us to do research. So it, it very, you know, the disconnect was so big that when I came back to my hometown university to do the study, my colleagues said they probably hired Broadway performers you know, <laughs> actors to be patients, and and they they duped you, they they fooled you, and I said no, I really don't think that's true because I saw the people, and, and well, you know, it might have been true. Well, but so any good researcher wants to study it themselves before telling the rest of the world that it works, and so that's what we did. We did one study after another, and randomized trials, and then uh, Jeff Volek, V O E. V O L E K at the same time was starting to uh, study the same low carb Atkins diet, but in a different way. He did very close studies, giving people food, even having them come back. And I was doing the outpatient in a clinic obesity diabetes study. So over the last 20 years now, the, there's even a textbook that, that the South African group has what did a great job of being the, the senior editors of that and we contributed um uh chapters in the textbook on how to use the low carb diet for diabetes and for obesity treatment and now through the lens of 20 years and and, and being skeptical at first and you know so I knew it could work because two of my patients did it. And so you might be in that situation where, oh, well, it can work, but it's not going to be healthy. Can't You can't do it in the long run. Well, I've satisfied myself to a you know, fairly good clinical scientific degree, at least over the last 20 years. And then doctors you know, were using this back to 1860, really. And then if you 
take the big view, humans probably were eating this way for hundreds of thousands of years before the agricultural uh, revolutions occurred around the, the world. So, so I'm pretty confident now with our own clinical research, our own clinical care, even that you can use a low carb keto diet in a clinical setting or even as a healthy way of eating without concern about the safety. Don't worry about the cholesterol level. And, you know, if it does go up, there's a high likelihood the good cholesterol went up as well. So I talk a lot about the the metabolic syndrome aspects of the blood that you want to look at triglyceride and HDL. And, and so now, you know, my clinic has, uh, you know, five month waiting list at a five month queue to get in the door. And that's one reason why we started a company to teach people online. And I'm teaching more people online than in the clinic, but, but I can't uh, reverse all of the different diseases without seeing people one-on-one. -on -one. So that's another pearl is that if, if you're trying to reverse diabetes and, and obesity and metabolic issues with this diet, you want to do it under medical supervision uh, with someone who knows how to de-prescribe the medicine for the, to do it in the safest way. Now I've had people come in and tell me they took themselves off medicines and they're doing great. It's possible to do that, but I want it to be as safe as possible. Um, so through, through the years, I, I was roped into being in the leadership of an organization called the Obesity Medicine Association. So I started teaching the low carb diet and keto diet as it's, as it's called today. But our, our approach is not using all of these new keto products and, and, and drinking oils and butters and specialized salts and things. You don't need that. Remember my start in my studies were done around the year 2000 as a beginning and it was using the atkins method which was from 1970 to 2000 this is way before there were apps way before there were ketone measurements way before there were specialized apple cider vinegar things and so i don't incorporate any of those things in my initial teaching in fact i erase the the fact that People are doing that as much as I can, because if you're drinking oils and butters and and you know coconut oil and all, you're going to have to burn through that oil first. If you're trying to lose weight, it makes it more difficult, and it makes it more difficult to reverse diabetes as well. So we have a term called internet keto, which is the use of all of these really kind of untested things. And the keto diet that I teach in the office really is another version of what was called Atkins induction or protein power, the books that doctors used from 1970 to the year 2000. And I, I'm very curious about adding on ketones and other products, but they really haven't been studied yet to the degree that I use them in my practice. So I'm pretty much the old school real food, uh, uh, no biohacking, you don't have to measure anything, because if you keep the carbs low enough, you're going to be in ketosis, you don't have to measure it. You know, if an airplane is coming down, and you feel the deceleration, and you see people getting bigger, you don't need to know the, the altitude. <laughs> now, today, a lot of people want to know the blood sugar reading or the ketone reading, but the method I teach doesn't require any of that so after starting my own clinic i have to say i have a great job i mean i created my own my own practice and people are happy because in general they're getting better i have students and residents and visiting doctors who come just looping back that's how i got involved dr atkins asked me to come to his office and that was brilliant because there were so many barriers that, so you may be looking at this and saying, no, that's not possible because of that, because of this. Well, you're welcome. Oh, right. If you can make the trip to my clinic, or maybe we can find a clinic, a uh, model clinic in, in your country where it wouldn't be so far to travel. But I have to say, I've had people travel from around the world to just come to my little office and see what we do. Now, I can also teach people on Zoom, doctors the, at a doctor level how to do it. And it's really pretty simple. And, and that's going to be one of the reasons why you can't believe it. You know, it's too simple. And I know it, 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 it's so simple. Well, it's kind of, 
I now say it's kind of like the the doorknob or or the 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 aqualung uh, scuba tank. It's so perfect in design, you don't need to change it. And so the method I use was made so well that I really haven't had to change it very much. And the key is to keep the total carbohydrates really low, so the body fat can start burning pretty much automatically. And that that's I'm just going to end on a, a final sort of don't worry about this. Everyone goes into ketosis. If you don't eat for three for three days, your body starts burning the fat that it has on its body. We This is normal. And in fact, it's, it's probably a survival requirement to be able to go for periods of time without food. So when someone says that it's harmful and it's, it's going to kill you, I, I, I just kind of shrug and say, no, there's no evidence. For that, in fact, it's almost like: Would you design a phone when it's low on battery? Would you design it to self-destruct when it's all, no? So my phone says, you know, do you want me to go into safe mode or low battery mode? I said, yeah, you know. So when you you don't have carbs around after three days, everyone goes into nutritional ketosis. It's normal, and so it's really, I think, a not a secondary fuel system or a backup fuel system it can be the primary fuel system and and actually therapeutic for reversing so many chronic medical conditions that my doctor friends just use medicine to palliate and to manage and so i'm a fixer i'm a d i you know they, they have a saying a diy d do it yourself yeah. so you know you give me a, a some a yard a piece of yard work to do i'll be out there digging and, sh and i want to fix things and my doctor friends don't fix much with their medicine in terms of chronic medical disease so if you're struggling as a doctor or frustrated learn about this and, and it's transformational for for doctors. Uh, one of the most influential TED Talks was done by Dr. Sarah Hallberg, and she came out and, and you know, she's a former aerobics instructor, and so she looks, you know, really healthy, and, and she said, I have the best job in the world, you know, and then from then on, the, the TED Talk is, just gets better, and so doctors actually regain their interest in helping people and 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 uh, if you went into the medical or health field th wanting to help people and you find that you're not and it, you, there's another tool of course the secret weapon is food and so then <laughs> most patients now come away saying in fact yesterday this fellow said that's not what I expected in the clinic meeting you. And I, well, I hope it was a good thing. And he said, oh yeah, it's a lot better. You know, he thought he was gonna have to have shots and pills and all this. And all I did is give him a food list and explain that that you can be a fat burner by not and, eating carbs. <laughs> and this is why you call it the prescription strength of the keto diet, because you see the yes. application of it in all areas. How does yes. it really differ, Is when you look at the science, how does keto diet really differ from a low carbohydrate diet? So the carbohydrate level can be graded or or uh, there's a an amount of carbohydrate in the diet. So let's say you start at zero. If there's yeah. no carbohydrate in the diet, the body has to find some fuel and we we store our energy as fat on our body. So the body will start burning carbohydrate that's excuse me burning fat without if the carbohydrate level is zero so a typical um, american diet is like 300 grams of carbohydrate and you know an apple has 20 grams a, a cupful or a fistful of rice has 40 total grams of carbs and a slice of bread has 15 total grams so if you're eating bread and pasta and rice the the carbs add up and so a low carb diet is defined starting at about halfway there. So 300, a typical American, zero here. So 150 carbs a day is starting to get a low carb, but it's not keto, it's not ketosis. So you get down to 50 grams. Some people will be in ketosis. Some, If you're active, you're young, uh, uh, you might be in ketosis. And ketosis just means fat burning. So, But when you get down to 20 total grams a day, 
just about everyone will be in ketosis. So I we defined this in a, a paper, the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. I'm the first author, Westman et al., the year 2007, where the 50 gram is low, very low, and then very low keto is under 20. It's individual. So some people at 30 total grams will be in fat burning mode and you can check for that. And But the hunger going away and you're starting to lose weight, you know you're in ketosis. Yeah. Um, but that So that might shock you if this is the first time you've heard about low carb keto diets. The, but the, like like taking a Band-Aid off very quickly, a, a, a plaster or a Band-Aid, if you do it all at once, cut the carbs all at once, it's less painful. And, and you may, might crave for a day or two the worst thing you can do is have, you know, oh, I'll just have a little rice. I'll just have a little bread. That That's like smoking a little bit every day. And you can't quit smoking if you smoke every day. You haven't quit. <laughs> so actually, we we do a, a, a cold turkey, cold, you know, getting all of the carbohydrate out all at once. And and that's kind of the method that it has stuck for, for Dr. Atkins years ago, Dr. Eads, Dr. Bernstein, who uses this for type 1 diabetes. Uh, the studies now in the medical literature that are being done are starting with this very low, very low level, and they work really well. 20 years ago, some of the studies started with higher carb and they lowered it and it didn't work so well. And some studies started really low and then increased the carbs. That's like in, that's like lowering the dose of the medicine. And so the, the these people had no clinical experience. They were researchers. So they just dreamed up a protocol and read a book on how to do it. When I visited Dr. Atkins, he kept the carbohydrates very, very low until you reached your goal. When a lot of the researchers started following what the book said. They didn't they didn't take the time to talk to the doctors when when as a doctor myself I felt compelled to to learn from the doctors who had used it. And so if you go way back, our first paper, Yancey et al. 2004, a randomized controlled trial, low carb versus low fat, the results we got with the low carb diet in in numbers of weight loss kilograms is better than the other studies because we kept people at a higher dose of low carb diets now those studies have all been put together in meta analyses and what's curious is there i think four meta analyses now and i, I don't know why people keep doing meta analyses but so there are studies of studies you know, summarizing them and averaging them. And pretty much across the board, the low carb diet works better than low fat diets for obesity and diabetes. It's not to say that low fat diets can't work. So don't, don't get me wrong. And, and, you know, it's not a competition. We want to find things that work for people. And there are people who can do well on other approaches. But this one, according to the science, is more powerful. In, in the hands of the researchers and and in my clinical experience too. So in my practice, uh, people will say, I've tried everything. So you started getting into this practice. Don't don't worry. People will say, I've done everything. Well, they really yeah. haven't, but but they'll say that. And you know, I did Atkins and, I, and then I'll say, well, you haven't done keto with me. Or or you say you haven't done Atkins with, with me because a very important element is the support. And the follow, and yeah. and so the classic story is I did Atkins uh, oh I don't know fifteen years ago well that was when our studies were coming out it, yeah. it actually had a social blip um, and then well then it stopped working and I, I'll say well did you stop doing the diet and they'll say well yes and well because there was no one there to help them stay on it and so now doing it with a simple system it's important that the system be simple. When life gets busy, people are not going to want to take time to do your little tweaking. They're, they're going to want the big picture view. And then the support over the last few years, I've learned a lot about sugar and ultra processed food addiction. And some people absolutely need that support for the, the coaching and then the, the role modeling and the explanation of, you know, why do I self-sabotage myself, doctor? You know, I'm doing well. And then, you know, I, I will just, I'll, I'll just want to eat the rice or the, the bread and I can't stomp. And, and 
what's interesting is sugar addiction or ultra processed food isn't just sugar. It's just as likely to be the savory sides of foods, the, the pasta, the rice, the even, even fruit. And, and that causes oh, my fruit, you know, <laughs> I thought fruit was healthy. Uh, the, so the, and, and I'll say it, it can be healthy, but in the context of a low carb diet, when you're trying to burn your body fat, you're going to have to burn through all that fruit before right. your body fat's going to start burning. And then people, go, oh, and, and then the next question, of course, is, can I never have fruit again? And I say, yes, you can. So, so there's a weight loss process and there's a weight maintenance process. Yes. And and so I reassure people at the, the beginning that it's not forever. You know, we're not going to lock you up. <laughs> and so, but, and when you get to this point of reaching your goal, I want to be there to help you understand how to very slowly add back carbohydrates, the ones you really like, and the, not just the gratuitous yeah. right. munching in front of the television, you know, that <laughs> this can be erased pretty quickly. But the so there's a early process of the teaching, you know, teaching the mechanics of the diet. There's the longer term social. Yeah. How do you work it in your own life? Uh, this doesn't have to be expensive. I have had many people just eat at fast food restaurants like McDonald's and Burger King and Kentucky Fried Chicken. And I, you know, I don't eat at these places, but it's, this isn't me doing it. Right. <laughs> so I teach the, the foundation. And people will find their own sources of food, which I guess is another thing uh, you wanted me to address. You don't have to have super clean food. You yes. don't have to search out the avocado oil, which is hard okay. to find in our area. And it's very expensive. You don't have to have the grass-fed beef in our okay. area. It's kind of hard to find. And it's expensive. And it makes it out of reach for so many people. So what I teach uh, is kind of known on the internet as uh, well as prescription strength keto, but then also lazy, dirty keto, not, yeah. not in a bad way. It's in a good way. It means you don't have to spend a whole lot of time doing this, worrying about it. And in fact, if, it's, if lazy means people are doing the work for you, then that's great. Think of it as a positive <laughs> thing. And if it's dirty, it just means that you don't have to worry about the super clean food all the time. You know, you do the best you can. I don't want you to, you know, that, really you know, have unhealthy foods, but but uh, I don't worry, obsess so much about what the internet does in those areas. You know, that brings me to our midsection, and I really want to get your, I'm a big fan of uh, Westman Reacts, so I'm hoping for a question for Westman Reacts series, and um how do you respond or how do you react to the concerns about the environmental impact of the high fat animal based ketogenic diet? Yeah, and that is a, a common concern, especially among young folks, the yes. youth, they're being yes. um, trained or indoctrinated in the idea that animals uh, not only are, uh, contribute to climate change. But a popular element that I hear is that uh, they're unhappy and, and against the uh, unethical treatment of animals. If you're growing them in cages and feedlots and things, I mean, I have to agree that I, I want to promote changes in the the way meat is produced so that it's humane as much as possible. I, you know, it doesn't bother me, humans, uh, at least subset of humans have always killed animals for sustenance and i'm very grateful for that i i uh, as a uh, uh, grew up in the christian church christian religion and i'm very thankful you know we pray at, at meals and and so it doesn't bother me personally but i know it bothers a lot of people that the ethical treatment and, and i hope that changes the other element of the climate change is more complicated than people are making it uh, and it, it's uh, it's unfortunate that so many people kind of just uh, uh, are are almost uh, it's like mind uh, brainwashing into think thinking that if I have animal products, it's going to worsen the climate change. There are a couple of movies that I would documentary films that I highly recommend that address this. One is called Sacred Cow. And the other one uh, is called The Biggest Little Farm. 
The first one has to do with the climate change and low carb diets. The second one is just a dramatic story of people who reinvigorated soil with animal dung. With uh, so the the topsoil on Earth, when you get into the detail, and I, I look to Peter Ballerstad as an expert in this area. He gives talks about this. Uh, he uh, in doc, or was talking to me years ago about how actually you need ruminants and you need ruminant agriculture to feed the topsoil of our planet. And so, if you just go into plant based uh, kinds of things uh, that you're really we're destroying the topsoil now i'm getting w a little bit out of my clinical setting can you tell you know I, my <laughs> my strength is reversing diabetes and I, but one of the last talks that i i did with peter uh, is uh, he pointed out that the climate uh, carbon footprint of the of medical care of hospitals, of treating diabetes, of the drug drug development, all that, way out uh, out um, uh, outweighs the the implicated climate change of food. So that if you could reduce diabetes by changing the food, you would reduce the carbon footprint by people not having to have hospitalizations and buying drugs and the drugs are being developed and things like that. So that was an interesting kind of twist on it that I hadn't heard before, because we're not just talking about, about eating meat, and we're talking about reversing and preventing disease and human suffering. So, so I think there are a lot of ways to be healthy and you can actually use low carbohydrate principles within a vegetarian context so that you just don't want to have a lot of the sugary things. You want to stick to the vegetables and the, the combinations of vegetables that will give you total protein. So I, I, I'm not... Um, I will do a reacts soon. Uh, thank you for, for talking about my Adapter Life YouTube channel. And I'm proud to have gotten a, a, a play button on the wall. My, my, uh, but I'm responding. You know, I'm kind of protecting the keto space now. So yes. if someone's someone is just saying blatantly false things about keto, and there are a lot of people that do, I'm reacting and trying to give a, a scientific response, which means you know you have to prove that it's harmful. You can't just say it. You know, but there, you know, there's no one out there. There's no company protecting the the word or protecting it you know if you said a drug was bad you, you're the company's going to come after oh. you and tell you that you can't say that right so <laughs> so anyway um and i'm glad you're watching that I, i've had a pretty good response so far i'm you know new to the idea of of youtube and and you know once i got comfortable talking in front of a thousand people <laughs> we don't do that anymore because yeah. of maybe that'll start up again. What about any incidences of fatalities due to prolonged keto lifestyle? How do you react to that? <laughs> well, I have to say I've had people die. You know, that's what happens. Uh, the uh, They're not dying of heart disease. You know, uh, that, was, that was the first prediction that everyone would get heart disease. I mean, even within her first study was six months long. And one of the people, well, you might give them a heart attack. Well, I don't think so. Yeah, I talked to these other doctors and I, yes, I believe these other doctors. And so uh, people do get old or, or have other uh, other issues that go on, infections. And, and uh, I, you know, until a clinical group has a cohort, I, I still would hold out that there needs to be a a combined analysis with other groups who are actually following a low carb diet at a, a low carb level. The studies of people going into databases, and there's a UK database, and there's a US that you know all over, and and they pull out people who say they're doing keto or even have a very, have under like thirty percent carbohydrates. They're all being lumped together, and then and then the analysis for disease and longevity includes people who really aren't eating a, a very low carbohydrate or keto diet. So those are those analyses are are fraught with with problems. And no, I don't think that 
uh, well, at, at the time point we're at, I don't see changes that that look like things are going down. I mean, so that's another, if, if you're looking at something and you're going and everything looks good, you know, it, one day it's just not going to change, right? So what we're doing and what I do for the atherosclerosis uh, question, the atherosclerosis, of course, is the process that leads to narrowing of the arteries. It could cause a heart attack or a stroke, is I have people measure those arteries directly so that if someone's worried about being on a keto diet, even if they have a high LDL level, I'm now, we have the, the good fortune to have resources to, there's a company that goes around to measure your ultrasound of your neck and your, your belly, the, the aorta. And I have people measure those things as a protection against the, you know, the idea that this is safe forever, because we don't know. And, I, and I'm honest about that. And, I, and without any comparative studies, people who say their diet is best and, and makes people live longer, they don't know either. That st having studies or, or books like the Blue Zone or the the China study, which was just an observational study, the, these really don't tell you like an experimental trial can that people are living longer. It's people want to believe that they they read the books and the studies and pull out the information that supports their preconceived notion. I'm afraid. Uh, the animal studies that you know, I, I, on my channel, I, I downplay, don't look at them, <laughs> but, but there are a couple animal studies of of mice on keto. And yes. one of them said found that the mice live 10% longer. And if, so if a human could live 10% longer, I mean, that, that's 10 years, that, that's a big deal. Uh, and, uh, but then that I'm very cautious and you can't take the animal work and extrapolate it to humans that most of the time it doesn't play out that way but what i'm seeing now with 20 years of me personally not eating many carbohydrates and a co growing cohort of, of academics and, and clinic population is for those who are doing it they're doing well they're thriving they're they're not regaining weight they're not getting diabetes they're not getting heart disease but be, for me to be able to as a policy say you're not going to get heart disease, you'll live longer. We don't have those studies yet. I can't say that yet. Dr. Westman, just, uh, you know, digging a bit uh, or to one of the points that you mentioned regarding LDL. And uh, we have Dr. Don uh, Akopa, who is also a speaker in this conference, asking us a question. So I thought, let me pick that question from the audience. It sure. says, uh, he asks, is there, uh, is, is there still a role for statin among your patients with LD elevated LDL? Well, so that, that's a great question. And I get that question almost every day in my office, in my clinic at Duke University, where I work. And I think there is a role. So I'm a classically, classically, um, um, classically trained, I don't know if that's the right word, a medical <laughs> internist who I was taught to believe that statins were great for everyone and and that you just give insulin for diabetes and and I don't do the insulin for diabetes anymore that, that you don't you want to take people off the insulin for type 2 diabetes the insulin's already elevated in the blood so I, but getting back to the cholesterol I, I'm the more I look into the cholesterol as a as a, a mechanism and as a a, a implication, the the cause of cholesterol on the arteries is more complicated than just the LDL. So I've fallen out of the belief that it's just LDL. But if you use a medicine like statins or that lower the LDL, they also do other things. And so there are pleiotrophic effects of statin drugs, the anti-inflammatory aspects of it, that that in good studies, although they had to be large studies to find small effects. What you want is a, a study that's so small, you don't need many because the effect is so big. But but and the, the mainstream, I would be way out of sync with my medical mainstream if I said that statins had no role. So I think as secondary prevention, if you have had a heart attack or a stroke, uh, I think there is pretty good evidence. If you're a carb eater, remember under that umbrella because i'm treating now people who don't eat carbs 
And that has an anti-inflammatory effect of itself. So I think of the low carb diet as a anti-inflammatory drug, so to speak. It has an anti-inflammatory effect. Whether adding a statin will improve that anti-inflammation, I think it, it might. And so I just explain to my patients that the here, here is the risk, the benefit. There's actually a, a website that the Mayo Clinic put up to help you make a decision about statin use. Mm -hmm. And so I'll pull that up and go through, here's the benefit you'll get. And I try to make uh, the informed decision by the patient. Now, most patients will then just look at me and say, well, what would you do? <laughs> you know, I try to explain, but, but it, so if, I, so I, I'm still uh, uh, believing that, you know, if you don't have any side effects from statins, that's another sidebar that, yeah, if you, if you've had heart disease or stroke, uh, um, uh, it, it, there's probably a role to stay on the statins. Uh, and yet I don't think that the driving LDL down to zero is a good idea. My colleagues in cardiology was, tell me that. They said, well, we want to get the LDL down and 30 is one level. LDL plays a role in human nutrition that most doctors and, and most cardiologists have never been taught. So LDL cholesterols take vitamins and take cholesterol around the bloodstream in an aqueous blood environment the cholesterol would just go, so it has to be packaged on a fat-soluble transport. You can think of it as a, a delivery truck. And so if you drive LDL down to zero, what you're doing is you're not allowing your body to give vitamins into all of the different tissues. And this is where the side effects come in and why you see a lot of people, oh, you're on a statin, take this to counteract the all, all of that. So that's my long story answer to sure there's a role but but not everyone needs to be on statins and and if you don't have vascular disease so so my practice has evolved to well let's see if you have vascular disease so someone so recently was 70 years old eating a typical american diet now on keto for two years we check the arteries with ultrasound you do the coronary calcium score if you have that available that if that's all squeaky clean and the LDL is elevated, do you want to give a drug to somebody who doesn't have the disease that you're trying to prevent? Do you want to give chemotherapy and radiation therapy to someone who doesn't have cancer? This makes no sense. So we can personalize, and, and it's almost like these tests, uh, are then you, you go and it gets you out of the blanket treatment of statins for everybody. Because our, our guidelines generally in the big health systems would give you a statin if the LDL was up. So I'm way past those guidelines in my clinical practice. And, you know, guidelines are necessarily, they're always reactive. They're always going to be a little bit behind the times. Think of it that way. Uh, since we have uh, about 17 minutes left, I'll jump into the perspective of India and Asia. Uh, what has your experience been with people of Indian origin in the United States, maybe in your clinic? Yeah, well, uh, I have to acknowledge that most of the people in my clinic are uh, American, Caucasian, um, right. American. But now we have a growing number of people who have emigrated from India. And, um, I, and I understand that, that many people use the vegetarian sort yeah. of uh, ethical and religious approach to food, which is fine. So I, I just explained the, the glucose and insulin story, which is what leads to, to obesity and, and to type 2 diabetes. You want to keep the blood glucose and the insulin down. You can choose foods that you like. And, and then I have three books on my shelf that are vegetarian diet books. <laughs> and so I <laughs> say, I just say up front, I, my method that I learned is, is meat allows for meat eating. And, uh, you know, but if you eat eggs, that's going to give you a great source of complete protein. What I want to do is have you look for these keto vegetarian uh, options. In fact, wow. I link, I tell people to follow the Instagram uh, uh, groups from India directly. So, so that they can communicate directly in the internet. It's an amazing thing in that way for people who are, are in this space 
in India and, and they can get the latest information about how to eat in a way that you keep the glucose and the insulin low. And it just means moderating the amount. Sure, you could have some bread. Sure, you could have uh, uh, beans and rice, but you can't have a lot all at the same time. And if you're going to be really doing strict keto, well, that's another element. I don't really know that everyone has to be so strict keto. To, right. to You know, you may be able to lose weight or reverse diabetes with being keto-ish, you know, at the 50 gram level where you're, so I don't recommend that people measure for ketosis. The goal is to actually just change, reverse the medical process. So I would use a different teaching source for the foods because that's not my strength. And then to just say that um, you may be able to not have to worry about being in ketosis if you're active and you're young, generally you can have more carbs and you just don't want to have as much. Right. And uh, this, um, you know, the, I mean, uh, Indian uh, sources, but when you talk about it, a lot of vegetarians are, I grew up a vegetarian. So, yeah. uh, you know, there's a lot of, uh, as you mentioned, cultural aspects to it, religious aspects to it. And uh, D-Life is having a huge forum where the information and courses to equip people to, help and guide and support people at the right time. Uh, Dr. Westman, please uh, talk to us about Adapt Your Life Academy and uh, where how that started, where does it cater to? Um, you can give us more information about that. And as well, uh, you know, if any one of our viewers want to know more about you, where can they find you? Thank you. Well, we started Adapt Your Life as a company to just get the information out to as many people as possible. So I was approached by an entrepreneur who said, you know, doctor, how many people have you treated? And I said, well, 8,000 people. It's, you know, it's great. And he, and he kind of looked and said, have you heard of the internet? You know, you could probably treat 8,000 people in a day, you know, not, not in a career. So the ability to scale up the information and get it available to so many people has been a great uh, pleasure. And so the Adapt Your Life Academy, adapteryourlifeacademy.com, started with one course, which is called Keto Made Simple. And it's the kind of approach that we've been talking about, keeping it simple. You don't use all of these internet things. It, 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 it has its roots basically back in the Atkins diet keto made simple approach that that we teach and then we started getting other people to do courses for us so we have a, a course specifically for stalls stall slayer is, is the course uh, by my co-author on end your carb confusion amy berger who has her own website and all and then we've started getting other people dr uh, uh, eads are uh, they're making a protein course for us. So we're going to be launching that next year. I have a course on type two diabetes that we just filmed this year. And so the platform is, you know, is on the internet. You get access anytime you want. Uh, the videos have PDFs so you could watch videos or read and we target specific conditions. It's, it's we've, we've taught, again, I teach more people now online than I do in my office. Of course, they're not is sick, but uh, uh, it's really been gratifying to see that. So adapterlifeacademy.com. I do have a website called ericwestmanmd.com, uh, ericwestmanmd.com. And there it directs you to either a page, this, this is, we call it page four, because it was the fourth page of the handout and it kind of got out there on, on the internet, page four, or it directs you to a book the End Your Carb Confusion, and now there's an End Your Carb Confusion cookbook. And then it also directs you to the academy if you want more intensive uh, uh, coursework to support what you're trying to do. So we're trying to teach people with a, a minimal, just a page or a book or courses, just to try to get good information about low-carb keto without uh, having to buy extra foods and and it, it's just kind of crazy to see what people have done did you remember the people selling products when i think you really just need to eat excellent food you'll get everything you need that's really nice uh so i think we can uh jump directly into asking some of the questions 
from the audience and i uh, really do want to thank you uh, for being here and uh, in a minute i'll also invite uh, shashikant one of the question one of the question that has come up here and i'm also curious to know do you have any upcoming books dr westman well uh, my uh, my efforts have been put into doing videos for the academy so my latest book is called end well really my first End. solo book is end yes. your car confusion and yes. i think that's going to be the book for a long time until there's new research to say you need to do, you need to do something different all right uh there are a couple more questions and uh, i know we have shashikant here uh since we have 10 minutes for the questions uh shashikant shall i go ahead and ask the questions yeah Shall first I... of all yeah you, you can ask then i'll give a vote of thanks later on you can ask the sure. question. Very interesting sure. question from dr don dr don uh, is uh, we are getting really good questions from him uh do you agree that giving prolonged exogenous insulin is more harmful than helpful to patients with insulin resistant or type 2 diabetes well, so if someone has insulin resistance or type 2 diabetes, their insulin level is already elevated. And if you don't believe that, just check it a few times. It, you, you, I don't check insulin levels because I just know that's the pathophysiology. So it really makes no sense to add in more insulin when the insulin level is already high. So in, in our area, the, the my endocrinology colleagues have shifted over toward medicines that don't cause weight gain like insulin. They're starting to use the GLP-1s and the, the GIP combinations. And, and they're, so they're kind of um, using the weight loss, well, diabetes weight loss drugs, which targets the underlying issue. So it, it will lower the insulin level and that's the right thing to do. So I'm not a fan of insulin. I work really hard to get people off insulin or or to transfer them over to a different medication. But the low keto diet is re reverses type 2 diabetes. It's just a matter of time. And the Hallberg paper with uh, the Verta Health company behind it is the best clinical trial evidence of reversal of type 2 diabetes with a keto diet. That was, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm sure uh, there are so many questions here. Uh, one more question that I see is, uh, you know, in your book, Keto Clarity, you have mentioned that uh, when your body craves carbohydrates, it's demanding fats. What is the physiologic, could you explain the physiological reason behind that? Well, that um, we're, we, so we don't really need carbohydrates. This is a, it's not an essential nutrient. That's a language from, from biology and biochemistry and nutrition. We need amino acids and proteins. We need fatty acids. And so we, I think part of that is trying to persuade people to not fall into a craving for the carbohydrate, because that's just going to perpetuate the craving for the carbohydrate again and again. The worst thing you can do if you're trying to quit smoking is to have a cigarette to relieve your craving for the cigarette because you're just going to keep smoking. So uh, the actually, I don't know the exact mechanism for that. I think we're using that as a persuasive tool that you may crave something, but you're really wanting something that your body really needs. All right. Uh, and uh, the last question, and then we can have Shashikant back here. Uh, is ketogenic diet suitable for everyone? Uh, are there any side effects? I have heard of uh, people who are depressed need more carbs and can't really go cold turkey to keto. Uh, well, if you think about what our body needs nutritionally, if you do it correctly, we call it a well-formulated, adequate protein, not high-protein keto diet, I think eating real foods without sugars and junk foods is healthy for everyone. And I know that surprises some people, but children are born in ketosis. And when you feed them carbs, they go out of ketosis. So after three days, everyone goes into ketosis if you don't eat carbs or you don't eat food. So I think it's fine for everyone to do as long as you're learning from someone who's teaching it in a, in a healthful way that has science evidence behind it. There are a lot of keto hucksters out there who it worked for me to drink and eat 
butter all day long and in ghee and like no no so you want to follow someone who is teaching it in a way that has been scientifically shown to be healthy i i think the um you get all the nutrition you need. In fact, we have now have a childhood epidemic of obesity and type 2 diabetes, and it's not because of the fats. It's because of the sugars and the starches. So I have no concern. Even I have patients who are in their 80s and 90s, and there's a, some really interesting preliminary research saying this might actually be good to prevent uh, or or delay Alzheimer's and neurodegenerative problems like Parkinson's disease. And so I have no problem using this across the age span, lifespan. Uh, just to add on to that, what is the, uh, I mean, uh, you already mentioned this, that a keto diet is safe, babies born in a ketogenic state. Uh, would you Would you still recommend putting children onto a keto diet? Sure. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and, and we we we're we're pulling our hair out because the American Pediatric Association just came out with a we'd rather have people get weight loss surgery than do a low carb diet for children. Like, no, 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 no. So, so the guidelines are way behind the clinical reality. I'm afraid. And uh, Dr. Don here says, Dr. Westman is my rock star idol. So he's said a lot mm -hmm. of <laughs> uh, emotions with that. And one last question, I think, what's the emphasis on fiber? I don't really talk much about fiber. You know, we, we in our method, we give people two cups or two fistfuls of leafy greens the, for the salad, and then one cup of a non-starchy vegetable that could be broccoli, cauliflower, green beans, asparagus, and there is fiber in that. So they're re really getting about three cups in our method. Uh, I don't enforce that every day, uh, but it does help with regularity. Uh, and then I mean, the science has not been strong to say that fiber is important for medical prevention. And, and I know it, it might make you have more regularity, have a bowel movement more reg more frequently, but uh, the studies to say give fiber, you have less cancer, those didn't, didn't pan out. The, so there was that early thought. And then when the randomized trials were done, it really didn't help. So I don't talk much and, or worry much about fiber. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Westman. I'd like to have Shashi here, uh, Shashi Kant uh, And I know he would like to thank you as well. So Dr. Westman, thank you very much for accepting this invite. So you could spend one hour uh, for India. And <clears throat> I fondly recall our, our podcast we had three years back, somewhere in 2020, we had a podcast we did for D-Life. And personally, of course, I have done your Keto Made Simple Masterclass also. Uh, so right. I'm, I'm so happy. And the, the brilliant part about <clears throat> this particular session is we call it ketogenic diet for 20 years, 20 years of keto diet. And in yeah. India, people think that if anyone does keto diet, they are going to die the next moment. I know. Well. failure will happen. So how many of your patients, how many of your clients, your patients have died of kidney failure? <laughs> well, actually, one of my most grateful patients had lost 100 pounds while on dialysis. So, uh, you know, I mean, he, he had already lost all his kidney function, so it wasn't an issue. But uh, there you have to be careful because you have to keep adjusting the weight of dialysis down. So, you know, I, I've used this in people who are really medically ill, uh, even the heart pumps, their heart has failed so much, they put in a, a metal box that's like a, a pump to pump the blood around. I have patients who who have those and but I'm an internist with that background. I, I'm medically trained to handle that, but I really see no risk, especially compared to drugs and surgeries and things like that. Uh, this is a great medical tool. I practice the best internal medicine that I ever have and my secret weapon is food. Thank you very much. What is your last couple of lines message to India? Well, uh, don't be afraid. <laughs> 20, 25 years ago, when I first approached this information, I was afraid. 
and and I, yet I had the resources to collect information, collect data, do studies. Now those studies have been done all around the world. Believe what you see in front of you, not what other people fear monger and say is going to happen because they don't know. Make make sure they prove that there's something bad, you know, in it uh, before you believe them. And uh, that. Uh, I guess the final word of what you eat really matters and, and don't go down the path of sugary junk foods. Uh, it, it's not, uh, most people can't handle it. Some people can, that makes it confusing, but it's the sugar and the starches that get di digested to sugar and the foods that are made. So you can't stop eating them. That that's the problem. It's not you. It, so it's not the patient. It's not your client. It's the, the food that's made that makes it impossible to resist. Once you get out of that, it's much easier. And, and keep Thank it up. I, I'm so thrilled to hear that you're still at it. And it, once you get the, the, the bug, this is like a mission, isn't it? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Westman. Thank you very much. And namaste from India. Thank you. You're very welcome.